Nimala Petri is going to give a talk on ForSail, an open satellite platform beyond the LEO. Nimila is a space tech PhD student from Alto University. He has worked with CubeSat since 2013 as both a builder and an operator. And you are both systems engineer and subsystems engineer on the ForSail project. Welcome. Thank you. Yes, thank you. So my name is Petri Niemela and I'm coming from Aalto University from Finland and I'm, I'm presenting here our ForSail team. So our ForSail team is, uh, is, is a fancy acronym. If you are looking closely to the logo, you can maybe re figure out which, uh, which characters the uh, acronym is coming, but, but I'm not recommending to do it doing it, but it's basically the Finnish center of excellence in research of sustainable space. So we are academic uh, group uh, and we are trying to investigate new ways to implement sustainable, uh, sustainable space. And some intro about this background. So I choose this background here because, well, I'm coming from the Finland. Auroras are, are a big thing in Finland. And this is usually a one big thing what we are kind of seeing from the space weather. And space weather is very close, closely uh, related to the sustainability in space, uh, kind of in a way that we need to survive in the space uh, in a sustainable way, when at the same time the sway, space weather is trying to kill us or trying to uh, kill our society. So. Usually we are approaching sustainability in three different ways, uh, from the perspective of the society, science and technology. Uh, so society is about the awareness of the problem, debris problem and the other threats. Uh, our science par, uh, division is kind of uh, researching how to survive in the solar system with this fusion explosion, uh, investigate the fa uh, space weather phenomenon. And then there's technology perspective, where I am more focused. Uh, so we are trying to build solutions for space debris problem uh, and also make satellite platforms which are more robust uh, uh, in the space environment. So there would be less debris in the, uh, in the, in the orbit in form of failed missions. And this is where the open, open source and openness is coming. Uh, so, by opening the designs, uh, we can support the sustainable space. So, if we have the op more open designs, we have better understanding of the used technologies and solutions. So, we are really knowing how the uh, subsystems are working. We have good grabs how to make a cube set. We have more mature design. We have tested designs. Uh, so, we have more su uh, successful missions, and the space can be more sustainable. So kind of in one end, the openness uh, can prevent uh, us from making these same silly, stupid mistakes uh, what all the other CubeSat teams have been doing during the last 10 years. Uh, and we are trying to contribute here. And I usually like to say that the, kind of the only true way to push the state of the art is kind of being open with your design. If your designs are not open, well, how they are pushing the state of the art, it's... <laughs> kind of, it's, it's secret. Secrecy is not a way to push technology forward. Uh, so, who we are, a little bit more, uh, before going to the missions. So, we are the For Sale Finnish Center of the Excellence in Sustainable Space. Uh, we are covering the other University, uh, University of Helsinki, University of Turku, and Finnish Meteorological Institute. And we are developing different. Uh, different payloads for the sub, uh, satellite, or actually for two different missions. Uh, and we are doing space weather simulations, deorbiting systems, etc. Uh, so, in, in the sort, we have collected top Finnish uh, kind of small satellite players, which are not in the commercial world, uh, under one team funded by Finnish Academy. And funded by Finnish Academy is important because, well, we are, provide, uh, we are funded by academic money, so we don't have any, uh, any need to make profit with our productions. Uh, so who I am? A little bit, uh, so my name is Petri. I'm Master in Automation and Electrical Engineering. At the moment, doing 
doctoral candidate in space science and technology. It will be a long trip. Let's see how, when I'm going to graduate. But uh, in my past, I have been working a lot of, with cubes. That I have been building them, uh, and I have been also operating them. Uh, and at the moment, I'm working as a kind of senior system engineer and chief engineer uh, in, in the for sale project. And expertise is pretty much everything from, from ground to space. Um, some previous work where you might know our, our ALTO satellites team. So we have built ALTO 1 and ALTO 2. Uh, ALTO 1 was the Finnish, uh, first Finnish satellite. It was launched in 2017. Before this satellite, not, uh, no satellite building existed in Finland. So we were kind of pioneers on this uh, field in Finland. And, and we have started almost a completely new industry to the Finland. So at the moment there's uh, eight or nine Finnish satellites. Then we built all the two satellites, which was two unit CubeSat to the QP50 mission. It wasn't a very successful mission, so it was uh, deployed from the ISS. Uh, it failed after fi five days, most likely a problem with the power system of the software, and it has already come down to the Earth re-entered and burned somewhere uh, above the United States. Then we have, uh, sorry, 100 satellite, which was kind of jubilee satellite to celebrate Finnish 100 year anniversary last year. And it, it's, uh, it's a commercial platform with own payload done by uh, under different professor, but it's still a, a satellite operated us even now uh, today. Mm. So a little bit for sale mission. Uh, so we are building, under for sale uh, project, we are building two satellites. We are building one uh, three unit CubeSat for LEO for Finnish scientific purposes. So we are building the satellite for science. We have two different uh, main payloads. We have particle telescope to observe particles uh, coming from the sun and, and we are trying to investigate what kind of phenomena they are going through when they are uh, hitting Earth's uh, upper ionosphere. We have a plasma break demonstrator uh, to, uh, to experiment how we could bring down satellites uh, kind of with using only, only a small aluminum wire and, and having a huge electronic charge on it. And, and also uh, trying to build this satellite to survive in as harsh environment as possible. Uh, hopefully this satellite is ready next year. Uh, so we started one and a half years ago. And if you want to know more about the mission, there's a uh, paper released in May. It can be, I think, found from the internet. It will uh, explain everything about our science. And why we are trying to build a satellite platform which can uh, take the harshest space environment is that we are trying to go to the GTO with our 4 cell 2 satellite. It will be a larger satellite because we need to have more uh, equipment on board and, and we need to really fly through the one allen belts and survive in the environment. Yeah. And at the same time, do science. Uh, then going to the, our platform, which is maybe the focus in, in this talk, uh, so we are building a uh, roughly one unit sized platform design, uh, which is covering all the subsystems, OBC, attitude control system, uh, electron power system, radios. It has been built for high reliability, uh, ri high reliability. so there's a lot of redundancy. Uh, we have been re paying a lot of attention to different failure modes. Uh, we are u using mainly uh, uh, carefully selected automotive parts, uh, and we are also doing a lot of radiation testing for all the satellite components. So most, uh, most likely we are not able to get the results uh, from the radiation testing for this satellite, but we are planning to, or we are already building a, uh, test setups to test uh, all of our components. And if you think why it looks like a block of aluminium, it's because it's a block of aluminum. Uh, so, so there's a four millimeter aluminum shielding around the whole satel uh, satellite. 
Mm, so how we are contributing for the sustainable or this <coughs> open space community? Uh, well, by opening our designs, we are not trying to build uh, open uh, satellite mission for you, but but we are trying to open all of our designs and 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 not just few of the uh, carefully picked subsystems. And this is maybe not the most generic design, but I think it's it can be a really uh, really good reference design for the future missions, and it can be applied as it is for other missions also. Uh, so only future, so what is coming. Um, what we have discovered is that being totally open can be a little bit difficult. So we haven't been opening anything yet, uh, but uh, but uh, b because we have been thinking that it, it would make our life a little bit more trickier, uh, really uh, considering all the design choices uh, when doing the development, uh, possible branching of the designs and overhead. So we. Maybe this is the first time we are coming to the public that we are going to release our designs. Uh, and so far we have been just willing to concentrate in development uh, and not, not kill the project with too ambitious or too generic goals. Um, so a little bit technically before I run out of time. So we have our own standard, it's not PC104. We have a little smaller uh, a smaller stack, uh, both the connector and the BCB side, we are using redundant R4 to F5 buses uh, to power uh, or to communicate between the subsystems and the payloads. We are offering multiple 3.6 and battery lines uh, for simplicity. And we are including on-port computer, which has called redundant cores. Uh, there are some details about the subsystem. Uh, but but if you want to know more, I can go as deeply to the details later. Uh, I won't have time today. We, we are developing our own radio, uh, which is not just a radio, it's a telecommunication radio, so we are implementing our own protocol stack uh, with time division duplex, reliable data transfer, uh, and also the ground station segment. Uh, power system, uh, also with all, all the stuff, starting with uh, uh, almost rat hard ARM Cortex M0s, uh, power latching power switches, uh, and the batteries. Mm, attitude determination, uh, yep, I'm running out of time. Uh, so we are also doing uh, all of our attitude control system by also testing them. We have Helmholtz coil systems with air bearings, uh, hills, etc. And we are designing our own uh, own sun sensors, and maybe those are going to be published very soon. Um, plus the documentation, nothing in space is uh, anything without the documentation. Uh, we are going to release them, but not as textbooks. So maybe not the most easily approachable documentation, but documentation still. More, we have more of designs coming or from our history. We have a lot of craft segment designs. So if you are interested about some of these, please ask. Uh, as a conclusion, uh, we are really keen to open our designs, uh, but we have made a decision not to do it yet because it will create overhead and, and our, pr our primary mission is to make a, a scientific mission. So we have now the designs, we have done all the license work with our university lawyers, but, but schedule-wise we haven't yet published them. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Questions? Okay. So I'm just gonna guess that you use that 100 kilorad uh, Arm M zeros are probably the Viragos, Virago ones, and then yep, the other. Yep, they are those. What? Yep, they are Virago chips. And then the uh, wh wh what do you use for your main processor though for the R four? Uh, for the OBC, we are using this Texas Instrument Hercules. Ah, the Hercules, yeah, nice. Just a quick question until I get there. Yeah. 
when is the flight model concluding and you're publishing your designs? Uh, so hopefully the flight model is, well, we are starting to build the flight model now. So at the moment we are really small team and busy, but we are still planning to start publishing uh, even in this year, as soon we have the, all the kind of licenses written down and accepted. Designs are done by us completely, so it should be straightforward process. As a Christmas present then, right? Mm. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, are the designs for Alto 1 and 2, are those being open sourced? Uh, no, and I don't think we are not going to open source. We have something better than that, those designs. Okay. <laughs> um, but my real question is, and I think we should discuss about this uh, a bit, um, is um, because it seems like you're, there's these two standpoints and when to open source. So there's either you do it early on from the very beginning, you, uh, you, you say you're going to do this project and mm -hmm. people are contributing from the beginning and that helps you, giving you feedback. And the other uh, view on this would be we first develop it until it's done mm -hmm. and then we open source it and then the community benefits from, uh, from this product. So personally, as I'm going this way to open prototypes, work on open prototypes and then later on mm -hmm. go to final products. But maybe from the audience, what's your take on this? Going open from the beginning or only later? And just on, um, on that, before I hand it over to someone else, probably Alex, is that our personal experience from UPSAT and other projects of Free Libre Space Foundation and the current project that we're running right now, opening them early gives you better visibility, better visibility, better opportunities for contribution, mm -hmm. and it does not slow you down. It makes you go faster, actually. Uh, it, it, it varies a lot. Uh, give an example that, for example, uh, we have also Alta Free project. Uh, which is uh, student-led pro satellite projects. So students are designing everything uh, and they are not getting salary from, uh, from the designs. And in the beginning they made the decision that they want to be open sourced. But, uh, so they were doing all the, all the paperwork that uh, making sure that everyone accepts the fact that this will be uh, published. But then in, after doing some work, the overhead came. So when, when the system engineers and managers of the project started thinking like, yeah, we need to do this and this and this by ourselves, we cannot use those designs uh, uh, over there, we cannot buy something from the commercial market because we want to be open source. And this started to create overhead. So... Okay, but those sound like institutional issues and not open source issues, but yeah. we should discuss them on a round table. Thanks. Yeah, so... Just a quick note from my point of view, I think it uh, really depends on whether you are working on a specific mission that you have to focus on or you wa want to work on a mission but it's mostly technological development and you are looking for feedback. Um, I I've tried both and uh, I chose the, w the second way last time for Copenhagen suborbitals for the video transmitter system, the one where mm. first develop and then when it at least sort of work, start publishing it because it was under a lot of time pressure and just did, couldn't deal with uh, getting a lot of feedback and a lot of questions. And some people can do that. Some people can just ignore it when they don't have time, but I think many people are not able to do that. So, yeah. Just a... Um because we've been doing that for the third year now, and this discussion has been going on since the first year, right? Like the question on when to open source and how to do that, right? And from what we've seen up until now, for the missions that we're promising that are gonna be open sourcing things, we've seen little to no publishing of open source designs so do that. And I'm not saying that they didn't have the intention, it's just that after the fact that you're done with a mission, especially if it's a student mission, or something that is confined on a project specifically for a timeline, then no one cares and no one pushes forward the publishing and cares for the designs to, to make them open source or publish them. So that's a big um, risk basically on getting the approach of, yeah, I'm gonna build everything and then design and then publish things. Because out of experience, we've seen that this rarely happens. 
In particular, if the mission would fail, then then you say I'm not going to open sources because uh, and I'm going away from this. But actually, those are the missions that are then. This is the things that you want to know. What went wrong so that you can don't repeat this? Right? Yeah. Yes. Uh, I guess from my experience, I'd say right from the start, just full on open source everything um, because. Uh, maybe I'm, I'm, I have a little bit more freedom and luxury to just do it uh, myself than university restrictions. I can I can do it much more rapidly and without with a lot more freedom. But I mean, I published everything, all the failures. People, I've I've I live tweet my tests, and uh, people have been right there when things have gone catastrophically wrong. And my prior versions um, don't work that well. And by showing people why they don't work and how they don't work, and what lessons can be learned. Um, it's not only helped me evolve more rapidly, but I've been able to get feedback from the community and really build a community and start pushing forward more heavily on, on developing something that does work. So I'd say um, right from the beginning, who cares if it doesn't work? Uh, people, everyone learns from it. And I think a lot, a lot of where I am now is from prior failures. Uh, so maybe it's different for a university setting, but I'd say open source from the beginning. Yes, I, I would say that you need to have this skill to create a community and communicate with the community. Otherwise, it will won't work. And it's kind of unso unfortunately the fact that we are engineers. We are not always the best person on the ground to communicate our results. Mm. I, I'm a very shy, quiet pe person. Um, people who know me know that I, I don't really start conversations that well. And when I started, nobody knew I existed. Um, and I was kind of just throwing stuff out into the void. And then people um, like Joe saw it and contacted me and then Julian and the Pocket Cube community. So you, it is hard at the beginning. You start unknown. But if you keep pushing more and more and more and connecting with people, they will eventually see it. It's just a, a matter of just throwing it out there and see who, who sees it. But no one will see it if you don't throw it out there. <laughs>